Intamin amusement rides have made over 150 different roller coasters. As such, they've used many different track types in their long history. The first part of this video will go over their past and current track types, and the second part of this video will show you how to easily recognize most of Intamin's many coasters. Intamin's first coaster was a kiddie coaster. Then they made a wooden coaster. Then finally, Intamin came out with their first large-scale steel coaster, Vertigo-Rama. This coaster's track design was very similar to Arrow's track design at the time. However, both this style of track and this coaster were short-lived, as Intamin never used this track style again, and the coaster closed after never opening in 1983, and has been standing but not operating ever since. Intamin's next large-scale coaster was Sarajevo Bobsleds at Six Flags Magic Mountain. This coaster was Intamin's first successful large-scale roller coaster model, with five being built. Intamin's next coaster track was more traditional. In fact, it was nearly identical to what became B&M track. To find out more about B&M track and how to tell the difference between the multiple manufacturers who have made coasters with this track, check out the video I made on B&M, link in the video description. The first Intamin coaster to use this style of track was Z-Force at Six Flags Great America in 1985. Three years later, in 1988, Intamin debuted their first stand-up coaster. These coasters are often confused for B&M coasters due to how similar the two manufacturers' stand-up coasters look. Some examples of the Intamin stand-up coaster are Cobra, that formerly operated at La Ronde, Shockwave at Drayton Manor, and Batman the Escape at the now-defunct Six Flags Astroworld. In 1993, Intamin debuted their oldest track type still in use today. This track type consists of two rails with a few support beams in between them, but only in two dimensions. This track design is used on most Intamin coasters on parts of the track that do not face extreme forces, as a way to save money by using less steel. You can often find this track on places like the transfer track, on even the largest Intamin rides. This track type has also been used independently for some of Intamin's family coasters. A few years later, Intamin introduced their reverse freefall coaster. This coaster again used a new track type. This new track was very similar to what is now RMC track, the difference being that the side friction wheels are on the outside of the rail, rather than on the inside like on an RMC. Some examples of these coasters are Tower of Terror 2 at Dreamworld and Superman Escape from Krypton at Six Flags Magic Mountain. Next, Intamin would introduce the Impulse Coaster in 1998. These coasters used two all-new track types. The first was the Triangular Intamin track, and the second was the Square Intamin track. These two track types are still used by Intamin today. That same year, Intamin introduced their multi-inversion models. These coasters broke multiple world records for a number of inversions when they opened. An example of a multi-inversion coaster is Colossus at Thorpe Park. The year 1999 was very important for Intamin, as they built their first ever hyper coaster, Ride of Steel at Darien Lake. This coaster's design set the stage for Intamin's largest year to date. The year 2000 was great for roller coasters in general, but Intamin was behind many of the great coasters of the year. First, Intamin built a clone of Ride of Steel at Six Flags America. Next, they built an all-new hyper coaster for Six Flags New England, also originally named Superman Ride of Steel. This ride continues to compete with the next coaster they built in the year 2000 for the Golden Ticket Award for Best Roller Coaster in the World. That other roller coaster is Millennium Force. Using Intamin Square Track, it was able to beat the height world record, rising to a height of 310 feet. Along with these three large roller coasters, they built another impulse coaster at Six Flags Ohio in the year 2000. Intamin continued to use this track design in creating record-breaking coasters like Top Thrill Dragster, which opened in 2003. Intamin used these three track types until 2010 when they added a new track type to their arsenal, first used on Intimidator 305 at King's Dominion. This new track type consisted of two rails, connected both two-dimensionally and three-dimensionally to a support spine in the middle of the track. The spine was connected to another support spine on the outside of the track. This new track design allowed for more forces to be put on the track. This is why you often see this track type on Intamin's most intense coasters. So now that you know the history of Intamin, how do you recognize their coasters? Well, the easiest way is to look at the train. On some Intamin rides, there's a small plaque saying Intamin and the model of the coaster. 
For example, in the front car of Millennium Force, it says Intamin Giga Coaster. However, this method does not always work as many of Intamin's coasters do not have such a plaque. The second way to tell if a coaster is made by Intamin is to look at the wheels. All Intamin wheels have Intamin stamped into them. You can easily see these wheels on Top Thrill Dragster, Maverick, and Storm Runner. All of these coasters sit stationary with their wheels exposed at some point on the ride, allowing you to read them. If both of these techniques fail, you can always just use the Roller Coaster Database, or RCDB, to find out the manufacturer and just about any other statistics about a roller coaster. Intamin is one of the largest roller coaster manufacturers in the world, as well as one of the most innovative. As such, they will likely remain a major coaster manufacturer for years to come.